Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a more advanced feature uh, of different radar detectors. It's often kind of underutilized and underappreciated. Uh, it's the frequency display of your radar detector. That's a feature that I find actually really, really useful. I get a lot of information uh, just from the frequency display. And in this video, I wanna kinda of go into more information about uh, well, how to use that feature, how to understand the different frequencies that the radar detector is telling you, and ultimately how to use that information uh, to help improve your odds of avoiding a ticket. <laughs> So any radar signal out there is gonna have a frequency associated with it. It's the exact same thing as like how different radio stations are tuned to different frequencies. Uh, it's the same thing with different uh, radar sources, police radar guns, door opener, speed signs, blind spot, anything like that. They're all gonna have uh, different frequencies and that information can be really useful. Uh, it's kind of like one tool in your tool belt to help improve your situational awareness. It's a lot like having a radar detector with arrows to let you know where the source is uh, or having a strength meter to let you know how strong the signal is and give you a rough estimation as to how close you are to the signal or something like a bogey counter to let you know how many signals are present. Uh, knowing the frequency of each specific signal can also be really useful. I've done another video in the past going over the different radar bands, X, K, and KA band, uh, and this is gonna go into even more information talking about the different uh, frequency ranges within each specific band. Uh, let's start out first by talking about KA band. Now KA band, it's a really wide range of frequencies. It stretches all the way from 33.4 gigahertz uh, to 36 gigahertz. It's 2,600 megahertz wide. However, police radar guns uh, here in the US, they only transmit in small sections of the entire range of KA band. Uh, the different manufacturers that exist, they've kind of selected different ranges that they want their guns to operate in. Uh, for example, you've got MPH. Uh, their guns are designed to transmit around 33.8 gigahertz, plus minus 100 megahertz or so. So you're looking at 33.7 to 33.9. Uh, Stalker, they tune their guns for 34.7 plus minus 100 megahertz. That said, Stalker guns too tend to kind of drift more, so they'll transmit sometimes a little higher, sometimes a little bit lower, but around 34.7-ish. Uh, then you've got the 35.5 guns, which are going to be from Custom uh, and from Decatur. Those guns are going to be anywhere from typically 35.4 to 35.6. So you're looking at about 600 megahertz total out of the full 2600 megahertz that's available. And knowing the exact frequency of the different radar guns that the cops are using, that can be really useful information. So you know not only the brand of radar gun and potentially even the capabilities that that gun offers, but you may even know the department and that can be really useful. Uh, for example, here in Washington State, uh, the Washington State Patrol typically is going to be transmitting around 33.8. Uh, they've got a lot of MPH guns in their inventory. And I'll see here in the Seattle area, uh, a lot of the city local departments will be transmitting at 34.7 or 35.5, and that information can be really useful. Washington State Patrol is typically gonna be on the highway, sometimes in the city, but typically on the highway. Uh, and so if I pick up 33.8, chances are that's actually gonna be, well, highway enforcement. If I pick up 34.7 or 35.5, that's more likely to be maybe something over on a surface street over in the city that's not actually on the highway. There are exceptions. There actually are some 34.7 and 35.5 guns in their inventory, and I have run into that. But kind of statistically speaking, I'm more likely to see 33.8 on the highway. And so that information can actually be really useful for me. Additionally, what if you're looking at the frequency of the radar gun and you notice the frequency actually changes while you're driving? Now, it's normal for signals to fluctuate, maybe like one, two, three megahertz or something. But if you see a more drastic jump, like let's say the signal first, you start picking it up as 34.678 gigahertz. And then all of a sudden the signal switches and now you're like 34.726 gigahertz. That's a big change. That's actually gonna be a different radar gun antenna. That can tell you a number of different things. And so it could be an officer who just switched from maybe his front to his rear antenna and he's monitoring both directions of traffic. It's also possible that that different antenna could be in a different car altogether. So it's possible that maybe you pick up one officer, but there's a second one as well. He could be nearby, he could be another half mile down the road. And just like having a bogey counter can be useful to let you know that there's multiple signals present and arrows can be useful to let you know that maybe you've passed one officer uh, and there's a second one up the road, seeing different frequencies also will let you know that, hey, there's multiple antennas at play. You don't necessarily know if it's just one officer and he's running you know, front and rear, 34-7 guns, if you pass one car and they're transmitting two different frequencies, well, that tells me that's a Stalker DSR-2X. That gun is actually capable of transmitting both front and rear antennas simultaneously and monitoring both directions of traffic. Most other guns, you have to actually switch from front to rear. So again, you start learning a little bit more about the capabilities of the officers and what guns they're using. Additionally, knowing the exact frequency of the uh, radar signals that you're picking up on KA band can be useful to deal with some false alerts. Uh, again, as I mentioned, police radar guns are only designed to transmit within small uh, kind of sections of KA band. 
Uh, I was driving around with the V1 Gen 2 recently, and that detector with the current firmware has some issues with KA band falsing, and uh, I was actually picking up some KA alerts that were around 34.0 gigahertz. Uh, I know there's no police cars that transmit in that frequency range, and so that tells me, hey, this is just a false alert that the V1 is experiencing, and so I can then start using custom frequencies and start shutting off uh, different frequency ranges on the detector to eliminate those false alerts that I've been experiencing and get a quieter detector. Uh, that feature is not going to help for the times when the detector actually falses in legitimate police radar frequency ranges, but it's definitely helpful uh, to basically eliminate the false alerts that I'd never want to experience. Similarly, I've seen some things with the Escort Maxi i360. There was an issue where uh, somebody had installed it in their Tesla, uh, and the detector was actually falsing to the radar emissions coming out of the Tesla, and they were getting some KA falses around 35.8 gigahertz. There's no police radar guns that transmit in that range, and so you could actually turn off the KA segment related to that frequency range and basically eliminate the false alerts coming out of your own car and make it usable to run uh, the Maxi i360 in that specific Tesla. And so that's a useful way, again, to deal with false alerts, knowing that the frequencies, uh, kind of knowing what those frequencies are, and eliminating those frequency ranges so you can actually use the detector while driving. Additionally, when you start shutting off certain frequency ranges in the detector, uh, it can actually start to improve the performance of the detector too. Uh, KA band, as I mentioned, it's a really wide range of frequencies, 2.6 gigahertz, 2600 megahertz, uh, and police radar guns, on KA band are not gonna transmit in the whole range. And so the detector, if you're scanning all of KA band, is honestly wasting a lot of time scanning unnecessary frequencies. And so if you actually start shutting off uh, certain frequency ranges to the detector, it's no longer wasting time scanning things that you don't need. And so uh, performance actually increases on the frequency ranges that really matter. And we start seeing improved reactivity and responsiveness of a detector that's like hyper-focused on the frequency ranges that you want. We also see longer range as well. Uh, this again is gonna vary depending on which detector you're running. We see big impacts, for example, with like the V1 Gen 1 uh, or a lot of the Escort detectors. We see a pretty minimal impact with the unit detectors and we see no impact with the V1 Gen 2. Again, depending on how uh, the underlying sweeping algorithms are being developed in the detector. And so knowing the exact frequency the detector's picking up on KA band can tell us a lot of things. It can tell us about uh, the different police officers that we're gonna see, different departments. It can tell us if there's multiple cars involved, multiple cops up the road. Uh, it can help us deal with some of the false alerts that we may experience on KA band. We can uh, actually start tweaking our detector to improve performance. We can make the detector more usable in situations where maybe it wouldn't be compatible with the car that you're driving in. So there's a lot of benefits actually to knowing the exact frequency uh, that you're picking up with your detector. What about K band? Uh, K band's a little bit different uh, for a couple reasons. Number one, uh, the frequency range of all of K band is much smaller than K band. K band is like 2600 megahertz wide. K band is like maybe two to 300 megahertz wide. So it's a much smaller range of frequencies that you're looking for. Uh, additionally, the entire range of K band can be used by both police officers and by false alerts. And so this kind of band segmentation idea where you're shutting off different frequency ranges is not gonna be as useful on K band as it is on KA. Uh, in some areas, like overseas in Europe, there are some photo radar systems which are really tightly tuned to certain frequency ranges, and so you actually have some additional K-band segmentation options for international firmware, so different detectors that give you well, more options to actually segment K-band. They may actually sweep lower on K-band than uh, North American detectors because, well, the radar guns overseas may actually transmit lower on K-band, and so you're going to see some differences there. But here in the U.S., uh, the K-band segmentation options are not as useful. There are options to maybe kind of narrow down the entire range on K-band, especially if you don't need some of the like super low 23.8 or 23.9 K-band stuff and you want maybe 24.0, 24.1, 24.2, kind of that main range of K-band, you can kind of start to tighten things down a little bit on your detector and again, start to cut out some of the false alerts on the uh, far edges of K-band. Uh, that said, knowing the exact frequency on K-band can also really be useful too. Uh, the main example that I can think of is uh, blind spot falses. 24.199 plus minus a few megahertz, that 24.199-ish range is really commonly used by blind spot radar systems in Hondas and Acuras and Chrysler Pacificas, for example. Uh, additionally, if you see a signal and it just pops up as 24.168 or 24.160, the 24.168-ish signals are commonly Hondas, Acuras, Chrysler Pacificas, uh, Jeeps, GMs, etc. Uh, additionally, let's say you pick up a signal and it's 24.123 or 24.124. That's a classic frequency range 
for Mazda CX-5s. And so whenever I see a signal that's 24.124 or so, I'm immediately looking for a Mazda CX-5 in front of me uh, with the mirror lighting up for the blind spot monitoring radar. Now that said, as I mentioned before, police radar guns can transmit in the very same frequency ranges uh, that blind spot radar or door openers or speed signs can transmit on. For example, uh, here's my custom Falcon K-Band radar gun. Uh, let's take a look at what frequency range this one is designed to transmit on. 24.124. That is the classic frequency range for a Mazda CX-5. And so just because I'm seeing a signal that's tuned to 24.124 doesn't guarantee that it's a Mazda CX-5. And so if I see a signal at that frequency range, I'm immediately going to be looking for a Mazda right in front of me. If I don't see it, then I'm like, okay, it's potentially a police officer. That could be a legitimate police radar gun. And so I'm looking for things like uh, the frequency of the signal. I'm looking for the strength. If I see a Mazda in front of me, if I get closer, does that signal get stronger? If I get farther away, does it go away? If I pass the Mazda, does the signal disappear? Or maybe let's say it's completely uncorrelated to the car. And as I crest the top of a hill, suddenly that signal gets much stronger. Oh, that's potentially an officer down the road. Uh, now I can see the radar gun much better. That's why my detector is getting stronger. And so that 24.124 signal in this case, it's not a Mazda. That actually looks like it could be a police radar gun. And so, you know, you've got some uh, kind of additional information that you can tell just from the frequency to give you more information to start doing your analysis. Now, these different frequency ranges that I mentioned that are common for blind spot radar, uh, we're starting to see a lot of radar detectors that are designed to give you additional filtering capabilities uh, to help add some filtering specifically for those frequency ranges because they really are common. Uh, and we're seeing tons and tons of falses, you know, from Mazdas and Hondas and Acuras and Chryslers and GMs, all of these cars, right? And so if you like, you can add some additional K-blocks or K-notch filters to help uh, deal with some of the false alerts from cars in this frequency range. Again, though, the risk is if you have these filters enabled, it could potentially be muting uh, a legitimate police radar gun as well. And so these kinds of filters will affect, uh, you know, both blind spot radar as well as legitimate police radar guns when they're simply looking at the frequency uh, of the different signals that you're picking up. They can be really useful in practice, especially if you have a ton of those false alerts, but the risk is, well, you could also be uh, muting different police radar guns. And so you've got kind of different levels of control to maybe only mute weak signals, but still alert to really strong signals, for example. So uh, detectors are giving you kind of uh, the tools to deal with some of these false alerts. And it's kind of up to you to figure out where's the best balance for you with uh, kind of quieting down the false alerts while still also giving you uh, the alerts you need to legitimate police radar. And so knowing the exact frequency range of the different signals lets you start doing some additional analysis and kind of looking at your surroundings and getting a better idea of what's going on. It's just like having antennas, or sorry, uh, arrows for your radar detector to let you know where the signal is coming from, strength meter to let you know how strong the signal is, or a bogey counter to let you know how many signals there are. The frequency information can also be really useful and you can use that information to tell a lot more about what's going on, you know? Identifying blind spot radar versus legitimate police radar. It's just one more tool that you've got in your tool belt. And these are just kind of some of the examples of how I use uh, the frequency information with my different radar detectors uh, to give me more information and help me kind of do better analysis on the road. Like ideally one day we'll get to a point where a radar detector doesn't false at all to blind spot, falses, right? Or to anything else, it doesn't have any falses and it only alerts to legitimate radar. Maybe at that point, knowing the exact frequency information would be less useful, but I still find it really helpful to then know kind of what radar gun is being used or what police department is up there, or if there's maybe multiple officers at play, that kind of stuff. You can do some of that kind of stuff with like a bogey counter and whatnot, but nevertheless, the frequency information is definitely a feature that I find to be pretty useful. I feel like it's not really discussed all that much. This is kind of a talk and an explanation that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. In fact, I actually wanted to do this as an episode of Five Minute Fridays, but I'm sure I'm well beyond <laughs> my five minute goal. And so I'm just gonna release this as like a normal video. But with all that said, if you guys are still watching, thanks so much for watching. And I'm also really curious for those of you guys who use the frequency information, do you find it useful or do you maybe not use the feature? Uh, maybe after watching this video, are you gonna start using it? I'm also curious, is there maybe a uh, something about using the frequency information, a benefit that I left out that I didn't mention in this video. And if that's the case, let me know down in the comment area about that as well. And so anyway, yeah, just wanted to do a video. I'd say quick video, but not quick as usual for my videos. Just wanted to do a video talking about uh, kind of uh, the benefits that you get uh, if you start actually paying attention to the exact frequency of the different radar sources, whether they're real or false when you're driving around. And so, woo, that's it for now. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're all doing great. And I'll see you in the next video.